The Lorax, a book by Dr. Seuss. When you hear this sound, you'll know it is time to turn the page. Let's begin. At the far end of town, where the grickle grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing, excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could, before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows. The old Wunzler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Wunzler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkin, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of miff muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He will tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snub, his secret strange hole in his groovulous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Slup. Down slups the whisper phone to your ear, and the old Wunzler's whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a snurgly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green, and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the swarmy swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place. And I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbalutes frisking about in their barbalute suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle fruits. From the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffle trees, all my life I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. 
I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill, and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft, and I knitted a sneed. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle a tuff? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed's a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool need. But the very next minute I proved he was wrong, for just at that minute a chap came along, and he thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy. You can never tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts. And I said, listen here. Here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunzler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken. Sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunzler family was working 